Welcome to Phong Nha, the adventure capital of Vietnam. In this week's episode, I will go into the depths of the jungle and seek of a once in a lifetime adventure and to see the fourth and sixth largest cave in the world. This cave is truly, truly impressive. And I've seen many, many, many caves in my lifetime before, but this is absolutely insane. Stepping out of my comfort zone, multi-day hikes have always been something I've been avoiding. Reason being is, where will I sleep? And what will I eat? Hmm. <sighs> and where will I poop? Yeah. I hope this video inspires you to step outside your own comfort zone to try something new that makes you feel alive. Because if you let fear and age dictate your life, are you really living? So for all you adventure seekers, stick around for an awesome episode full of trekking, cave exploring, abseiling, and so much more. So, let's hop into day one. Good morning guys, so right now, I am at Jungle Boss's headquarters. As you guys can see, we are preparing to get ready for our trek. We're gonna get an information breakdown on what the trek will look like today, but it starts with a 24 kilometer hike into Dok Geo, a really beautiful section of the jungle here in Phong Nha. And from there, we're gonna have lunch to recharge and then head to Tiger Cave where we're gonna be doing a cave swim and setting up camp there for the night. So this is something you guys are gonna wanna see. Is that what you're wearing? That's what you're wearing? You're telling me to be careful? You're wearing sandals, bro. He's telling me I need to be careful in my shoes because they might be slippery. And the man is wearing sandals. <laughs> Professional hiking shoes right there. After gearing up and signing our waivers, it is a release form. So if I die, they're off the hook basically. <laughs> We hopped into the van and headed 45 minutes down Victory Road into the National Park where we were greeted by the lush green jungle, rolling hills, and even some cows until we reached the trailhead. We are here. This is the start of the trailhead. And there's so many porters here carrying in tents, food, supplies, anything that we'll need to keep us safe, full, and not hungry on this trip right here. See these big ass bags here. Này bao nhiêu ký vậy? oh my god <laughs> so yeah you guys can see these are about 35 kilos each so in pounds maybe about 70 pounds so these aren't light and these guys are carrying it into the jungle for us and doing the entire trek with us absolutely mental we then set off into the jungle trekking through mud climbing over trees and transversing our way through the ever-changing landscapes so we just started into the trailhead and it's already super slippery. You can hear the mud. Our, our, our porters are a different breed. Literally these sandals, I don't know how they are doing it. Like I'm falling all over the place with proper shoes on. And this dude, right here. Rocking some dinky sandals, crazy. The first section of the hike was challenging. With humidity forecasted at 100% and due to the rain over the last week, there were leeches. Hundreds There's a leech right here. Bye bye. <laughs> I just had one on my arm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> She's fogging up my lens, but I just had one on my arm and had a massive freak. I was like shaking my arm like crazy trying to get it off. You can see the humidity in here. Oh, leech. Oh, there's one right there. Leech. So many leeches in here. We made it to the halfway point where we took some time to check if we were clear of leeches and even got to share a snack and crack a few jokes. So we got some food, some food? What is it? Hail coal. Yeah. So dried pork, super, super good. As the skies got darker, I remembered earlier in the week getting caught up in a crazy storm in Ho Chi Minh City and checked the forecast for the weekend of the hike. It wasn't good news. We passing over Northern Vietnam, Central Vietnam, and Southern Vietnam. Oh. As the storm rolled heavily into Phong Nha's National Park, we decided it was time to settle down and have some lunch. I have no idea what I ate here, but it was pretty good. After eating and recharging, we headed off into the final section of day one, where we would be spending the next two hours hiking through these mighty trails to our first campsite. And this is where I fell into an inspirational conversation. So, a lot of people were commenting on my post saying they were too old 
to do this hike. Oh, really? Quá bao nhiêu tuổi rồi? Huh? Quá bao nhiêu tuổi rồi? 40 something. So he... 40 something? <laughs> he doesn't remember his age. But he is 47 years old. And okay. he does stuff like this. He says it makes him feel alive. He likes to be outdoors. Like your body is meant for doing activities like this. So you're really never too old. Yeah, never uh, too old to trucking. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, no, whatever. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, it's, o it's only an age. And he actually did uh, the biggest cave in the world in Feng Nya. Yeah. So you're not ever too old to do things like this. Yeah, do it. Don't stay in your cave. Yeah, don't stay. Don't stay in the echo or outside your home. Yeah, it, you, so it's not a life. It's just existence. Go out and take a trip. And the funny thing is, I'm actually the youngest one in the group. Everyone else has kids or families for the most part. And yeah, you guys are just never too old to do stuff like this. So we finally made it to base camp. Let me show you around where we're gonna be staying. So I'm just walking up to the campsite. It's still raining. Unfortunately, I'm covered in mud. But little area that we're gonna be staying here tonight. Nice and flat. We got this big tarp that drains all the water down here. And then down there is where we're gonna be having dinner and chilling tonight. Got a clothes rack to hang our clothes. It's raining, so I don't know why everyone's hanging their clothes in the rain. I don't know. So we are going to be heading down into this direction here, and there is a cave that we're gonna go swimming in. So I'm gonna get the GoPro ready, and we're gonna go check out this cave and go for a swim. It also is a little bit cold, so will it be worth it? Probably, probably. I see the cave down there. Holy shit. Wow. There we go, guys. It feels like I'm going caving. I've never called in a cave hole this small. No, never, hey? Never. We did it, guys. It counts right there. Guys, welcome to my sleeping quarters. Let me show you around. Oh. So, as you guys can see, we are in a tent right now. It's just big enough for one person. Room to fit my toes right down here or my head. So it's perfect for one person, but I'll show you guys around on the outside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten different tents. Some are for two people and then some are for just one person. And then, I'll show you what the bathroom looks like. <laughs> oh, okay. The one. Yeah, I'll go check it out. Give them a tour of the bathroom. So the bathroom, up this sketchy dirt path. I don't know why it's up so far. So check it out. <laughs> Gotta trek up this mountain first. <laughs> still raining, guys. Still fucking raining out here. At least it is enclosed. But let's check out what it looks like. So, not too bad. They got a toilet. They got some toilet paper. And... I don't know what that is, but there's also rubbing alcohol to wash your feet. Uh, I went on a trip with the two guys from Scotland. Ah. From Scotland? From Scotland. Ah. Scottish. They are Scottish. Two guys. Yeah. So when we went to the hangover cave, so like uh, he just feel like something's wet. Mm -hmm. So he took his hand, his finger, to push like to let check, and then when he put it, take it it's out. Is blood? Is it bleed? It is blood. A lot of blood. <laughs> Wait, was it a leech? So the leech on his ball. On his ball. Three really leeches on his ball. How? I don't know. <laughs> and you know, like. Oh my it's just, god. It's just really like the 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 woman days. That's you know, like the the bleeding is. Really Hell no. Like Hell no. Oh, this 
That's amazing food. I'm not gonna bring, sit here and pretend I'm some badass because I'm afraid of the, the dark and the forest at night when I when I have to stumble out of bed at four in the morning and try to use the toilet. So that that's another reason why I don't like overnight treks, but we're here, we're having a great time. It's about 9 p.m. and I'm just so ready to just kick back, relax, and just chill out for the rest of the night because tomorrow we have an epic day of app selling, literally the entire day tomorrow. So it's gonna be so sick and so much fun. From there, we're gonna be heading to Con Collapse where we'll be camping at the base of that. So wake up with me tomorrow, guys, because you do not wanna miss this. And I'll see you guys in the morning. guys I think maybe three out of 11 of us slept last night I probably slept for 30 minutes because someone was snoring so 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 loud the ground was shaking oh all right I need to grab my clothes hopefully they're dry Change them into them in my tent here. That was snoring so loud it felt like an earthquake. Now it's from, uh, I think quiet, I, I think it was quiet. Quiet, quiet so loud. <laughs> I had to turn on a, f a fake fan. He can make different sound. He can make different sound. Yeah. <laughs> it's like and then he sometimes there's the double snore like. I I thought, I thought it, that, that's not two person but. <laughs> no, it was one. Only from the quiet. Yeah. It was only quiet. Wait, did you guys slept next to Quay, right? No, no, no. Me, 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 uh, me and uh, Ngan. Oh, you were right next yeah, to me. We, we, we next, we next to Quay. Oh, ah. you're right next to Quay. Uh, so, so far, make, make, make a square. Yeah. <laughs> make a square around, around Quay. I had to turn on a fake. Fa I have a fake fan on my phone, and it was still not even loud enough. Really? Yeah, I turned it max volume, and it was still so loud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How was your sleep? <laughs> Oh, he's gone. A great sleep. He probably had an amazing sleep. How was your sleep? <laughs> you're snoring all night. <laughs> I think you're the only one that slept. <laughs> yeah, only him slept. <laughs> After having some coffee and breakfast, we packed up our things and headed an hour uphill to the entrance of Kong Collapse. So we just hiked 360 meters above sea level all the way from down there and we just made it to the Kong Eyes, right? Kong so we're gonna be going through there where we got a small safety briefing and prepared for the biggest challenge yet. How am I gonna fit with my bag? Ab sailing for a total of 328 feet. Please. Oh man, I said I wasn't scared and now looking down there, I'm getting kinda nervous. It was nice knowing you guys. <laughs> my final last words. As I watched the others descend down the first section of the Kong Collapse, that's when their nerves kicked in. The first abseil was 164 feet down what it looked like was a small opening in the roof of the cave. You guys see right there, the light? That's where people are coming out of. And when I zoom out, I guess it's my turn now. Look at this, guys. Oh my God. It's hard. And from there, we hike down to abseil number two, which is 65 feet to the cliff's edge where we will be hunkering down, enjoying the view, and having lunch at one of the best lunch spots in the world. I heard someone needed rescue. Did you need rescue or they're just lying? You need a rescue? Oh. <laughs> Not uh, a bad place to hang out though. Okay. We're literally on the side of a cliff. Okay. I'm in a hammock. Photo shoot here. Oh, how awesome is this? 
<laughs> Never a million years I think I'd be in a hammock. 50 meters above the ground, just hanging out. This is life. This is what happens when you say yes to things. Guys, the final meal before our descent down. And I just took up the drone and it was amazing. So, so nice. So we're all just chilling here right now. We're eating some rice and spring rolls. Oh, I'm so hungry and I'm so excited to eat this. Cheers, guys. And finally, our third and last ab sale down to our campsite where we will be having dinner and kicking it back for the rest of the night. But first, let's get cleaned up. I am so, so, so dusty right now. So, one little final thing of discomfort. <laughs> this water. And it's freezing cold. It's gonna be like in and out, in and out. So here we go, guys. This is it. Quick in and out, quick in and out, okay? I'm like, I'm taking my time here. Okay, oh, it's cold. Okay, ready? One, two. Okay, let's try again. Let's try again. Two. Fuck. <laughs> we did it. Hey guys, I'm all clean. I'm all freshen up. I just took a nice little shower in that cold water there. I am gonna kick it for the rest of the night and just chill out, take in the beautiful campsite that we have here and just hang out with everyone. And we are just preparing dinner right now as well. So I will see you guys tomorrow for day three where we have a full jam-packed day of cave exploration. It's gonna be really cool, so I'll catch you guys in the morning. I hope you guys enjoyed episode two and remember to hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss episode three where we will be exploring the fourth and sixth largest caves in the world. Come join me on days three and four as we navigate our way through a series of intricate caves where we will be sleeping in the fourth largest cave in the world. And my God, was it cool. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.